If you need your pitch changed, well, NordVPN can doctor any surface to a new location so that your IP address is set for you to win. Want to watch a game on a free stream in another hemisphere? Give NordVPN the ball. Or if you just want to watch a clip on social media that a cricket board won't allow, promote NordVPN to pinch hit. So if you need a VPN, go Nord. Use nordvpn.com forward slash Kimber to get a two-year contract with a discount plus four extra months and gifts in some markets. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. Protect your computer like a bowler protects the boundaries in the death overs with nordvpn.com forward slash Kimber today. Welcome to the scoreboard. I am Jared Kimber, and uh, how on earth did Mumbai manage to lose that game? But at the same time, how on earth did they never manage to really take over that game? But even so, how do you explain that outside the fact that Rashid Khan and Mohit Sharma are a fantastic late game pairing, and Spencer Johnson bowled a wild two overs, that they would even come back into that. I, I don't actually know what to make of the Gujarat Mumbai game. So if you've come here for, you know, um, stunning analysis, uh, all I know is this, the Gujarat batted unders. So I sort of rushed and got stuck again and no one else made any runs at all. And they gave the new ball to Omasai, um, which I don't know. In fact, there were so many weird ass choices in this particular game. Namandar, Luke Wood, Spencer Johnson, Shams Malani. I just, there, there must've been just casual fans just on, Googling all these players all the way through. In the end, all of these players played a part in what was an accidental classic. But mostly, Mumbai had a great spell from Rashid, uh, sorry, Mumbai had a great spell from Jasper Bumra. But even though Rashid Khan didn't have as good a day, he and Kishore squeezed out Rohit, Brevis, and Tilak Varma. Though my absolute favourite moment of this game had to be at the end when Rashid Khan was bowling and Tilak Varma wouldn't let Tim David face like he was a number 11. And then when they did get on strike to Rashid Khan for one ball, there was a slip and a short leg at the death of a T20 game that at one stage they were a 15 to 1 shot to actually win. The other game wasn't as sexy. Sanju Sampson met Riam Pirag, who doubled his high score, or more than doubled his high score from the last tournament. And the keeper captain played an odd but lucrative innings. And it always felt like enough, even if they didn't quite kick on, um, as well as the end, because the ball seemed to go a little bit flat. Then KO Raul never got in front. And I think part of that was, of course, Trent Bolt's double strike. But the problem was that with Puran and Rahul well set, they had to get in front of the game and they never quite got there. And eventually when that ball went flat and got a little bit soft, it was a lot harder to hit boundaries. Um, it was not so much a great bowling performance from Rajasthan rather than the fact they just have a lot of bowlers who are really good at their job. But it is worth talking about Sandeep Sharma, who was outstanding. Honestly, though, when it comes down to it, I just think they scored too many runs um, with, with the, uh, against a batting lineup that wasn't quite up to it against a, with their very good all-round bowling lineup. Anyway, let us go on with the scoreboard. If you want to support the show or you want to ask a question, you don't even, even if you don't want to support the show, uh, the best way of doing that, of course, is always with a super chat. So hop on uh, with any of those if you have any questions. But we're going to get into the scoreboard part of the show. So this is, this is the win probability of this game. So uh, Mumbai were 97 for two, and they were an 87% chance of winning. Uh, they got to 121 for three, so you see 48 from 36 balls, and they were an 88% chance of winning. That's a long period of the game to be massively in front. But on top of that, what you can see is outside of uh, a couple of big strikes, uh, this might have even been, the, I'm trying to remember if that was a Spencer Johnson or, even, or, or something else, but outside of a couple of big strikes, they didn't really continue that, and it kind of just let them get back in. And there was really good pressure coming in. This is, uh, I think, the uh, row hit uh, wicket. And then they just couldn't hit boundaries for a long period towards the end here. Um, uh, and, and so it's worth having a look at the bowlers. This is a fascinating game for bowling, really. Omazai takes the new ball. He's swinging it around everywhere, getting the ball to skid. Really good review from him. I thought that was a bit high. So I, I thought it was worth a review. Um, but I didn't think they'd get it, but they got that. But also the early wicket of Ishan Kishan as well. It was a masterstroke giving him the new ball. It'd be interesting to see if you'd always want to give him the new ball. Uh, uh, Umesh Yadav did very well at the end, but of course the game was kind of slightly broken by that point, although not completely. 
sorry, Kishore couldn't couldn't be hit. They were happy to knock him around, though. They weren't trying to put a lot of pressure on him because they believed they were so far ahead of the game. Spencer Johnson, I mean, we could do an entire show on his 12 balls, if we're being honest. All this hype, he comes into bowl and is absolutely wrecked uh, in his first over in the IPL. Short and wide was his first ball. He was all over the place. He couldn't find the right place to bowl to either of the batters at that point and really went for a lot of runs. And then comes back and essentially sets up the game with his second over at the death. And that was after, oh my God, uh, how long was Ashish Nira talking in his ear? Like, if, uh, some, I hope someone just has footage of just Ashish Nira just talking at Spencer Johnson on, in his right ear, and then he starts talking in his left ear. One stage, Spencer Johnson misfielded a ball because um, I'm pretty sure his coach wouldn't stop talking to him. So that was fantastic. What about Mohit Sharma? Mohit Sharma, we, uh, the, the odds went out about... 30 points when he went off off the field. It was that dramatic. Oh, actually, it was probably a lot more than that because uh, that, that was why. But, you know, the, 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 the match predictors and everything, when he went off the field, when it looked like he'd hurt his finger, and he came back and did a brilliant job, the economy, the way he combines with Rashid Khan at the end, if Spencer Johnson is 85% of what people think he might be, that is such a good combination of those three from overs 12 through to 20. Um, just and, and Rashid Khan... Had to come on a little bit early. Chased wickets at times, but never let... Uh, sometimes he chases wickets and you could score off him. Today, he only chased wickets for two or three balls. And mostly he just went, well, if you guys aren't going to score and you're not scoring off my mate as well, uh, we're going to put the pressure back on. And they really did. <sighs> this is spent talking about having a whole show on Spencer Johnson. We haven't. Don't worry. Just 80% of the show. Uh, first over was 17 runs, and that second over, uh, eight runs, and he took two wickets in that as well. Look, we have seen many players of certainly a lot more experienced than him, a lot more talented than him, really struggle in their first games in the IPL. You know, this is Spencer Johnson is not used to bowling in front of 80,000 fans, right? That, this is just a, not a normal thing for him. He's a late bloomer. We know he's been injured. Everyone knows how talented he is. All those things are fine. How is he going to handle this? And when you get smashed in that first over, especially when it's the 10th over, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a cushier over, right? You don't expect to get absolutely hammered the way he did. So to come back, um, and I think he got hit for a six or a four early on in, in this over in the 19th as well, but just a brilliant effort um, for him and very, very important. And as we said before, Sai Kishore hasn't played a game in the IPL since 2022. It's only, what, his sixth game, I think, overall. Put the ball in the right area, dried it up, I don't think he's ever going to be a strike bowler. Fine. I, I actually, although he has a pretty good average so far in, um, in, in the IP. But I don't think that's his, his role. His role really is, is it's a dotted up. And just really, really accurate. Putting the ball in the right area. This is where you want your dots to be. But I also thought he bowled quite well to the left-handers today. And he kept the pressure on. And in the end, that pressure, you know, came up. Let's have a look at the Mumbai's top six. Obviously, Ishan. Not, not so good there. Uh, Rohit Sharma had a strike rate of 148, um, which is uh, absolutely, uh, 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 I think, fine. He probably had some of the worst batting conditions because the ball was going around. He showed intent for a little while, but in the end, did feel like a bit of a standard Rohit innings. And again, I thought he was set and he had the ability to break the game. It didn't look like he kept that intent up all the way through. And I mean, dear, I, I mean, he faced 28 balls in T20 cricket, I think, before today, if I remember correctly. I really liked the way uh, he set up when the ball was in the right area to hit. Uh, he played well. Running between the wicket was a little bit nervous. You would expect that in, in his first game. Completely did his job. 20 off 10. If that's what he's brought in to do, uh, I thought he was fantastic. Fantastic. Dewald Brevis came in as the super sub or the impact sub. I can't stop saying super sub, even though we haven't had super subs in 20 years. Um, I felt like he was striking the ball better than someone who ended up with 121. But throughout the second half of his um, innings, I did feel that he allowed himself to, to get stuck a little bit more than he should have. If you're coming in as the impact sub and you can hit sixes the way he does, I really think you need to keep putting pressure back on. And he didn't do that. Um, and... I'm not blaming him for the loss. In the whole match losing innings, look, I get it. These things happen. Maybe it's better for him that he just faced a lot of balls anyway early in the tournament and this game doesn't mean all that much. But 
I hope he learns a lot. I, I'd love for him with a coach and an analyst to just go back and just watch that and just see if there are other choices he could make um, in his innings. But I'd also like to go back at, you know, if I was the analyst from Mumbai, go back and say, how many times was he trying to hit boundaries and he didn't? Uh, I really liked his twos at certain times. Tilak Varma, I, I got that six at the end um, and, then, and then obviously um, uh, probably went, well, I mean, had to go, but sort of gave it away straight after, but didn't get the ball away as much. You know, this might tell you something about the wicket. Perhaps it wasn't as easy to score in, in the later uh, later stages. I mean, Gujarat didn't score particularly well in their later stages as well. Um, and, and you've got three batters here who all should have had much higher strike rates. Maybe we're being slightly unfair. I, I don't know. It is interesting that when the ball was hard, strike rate, there was a few players with nicer strike rates. I actually think Tim David was just starting to strike the ball really, really well when he went out. Um, but... Uh, at, at the same time, he did chew up a few balls there. All right. Is that it for that game? Oh, yeah, no, we're going to talk about, I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. I, I, I was trading on this game today, and uh, I was essentially trading on when Bumra was bowling and when he wasn't bowling. Because when he was bowling, Mumbai's Indi Indians odds came way down, and when he wasn't bowling, they went back up again. And that's essentially how I made money betting on this game. It is ridiculous the kind of impact he has on all of us. And he's right to do so. Like, um, but, but let's just go through this. Fascinating. Firstly, look how many bowlers they used. It's a lot of bowlers. Especially when you consider Gujarat didn't ever really look like getting away. So Hardik Pandya uh, bowled two up front and then bowled one later on. He took the new ball, and why I'm fascinated with that is that Luke Wood should be in the side to take the new ball. I've got no problem with Hardik opening the bowler, but if you're a wobble ball bowler, you should take the second over, and Luke Wood swings it more, he should take the first over. Uh, you know, just different kinds of bowlers. So I just think, I thought they got the order wrong there. Luke Wood had a fascinating day, um, bowled one over for six, then it seemed like they forgot him, and then suddenly he was bowling at the death. He had the reverse day of Spencer Johnson, and out of the two, you would feel a lot more confident with Spencer Johnson, even if you think he's a better bowler. But regardless of that, you would feel a lot more confident with his day than you would with Luke, Luke Wood, who really panicked in that last uh, um, over, his second over. Uh, I worry about these two spinners. Uh, eight runs and over and ten runs and over. Just, do we have the other one here? I know I'm going back a little bit here. But this is what this, uh, the, the other two spinners did on that wicket. Just worth remembering that. So I'd be a little bit worried about that. If oh, I'd be a little bit worried about that. Pierce Chola, I just don't know if he is going to be. I, I I don't. It's not that I don't think he can still bowl a good ball, but can he be a consistent threat? Shams Malani uh, is fine, but if they're not going to bat him, he needs to be more of a threat there. They bowled Daman Dia for one over, and but Gerald Kotsia and Jasper Bromara. This is a good partnership. If you can use Luke Wood more at the front, um, and 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 Hardy Pandey can bowl um, uh, a little bit in the middle, I actually like the idea of of, of Bumra and Kotsia bowling six of the last eight overs, like in a partnership. You might want to use them slightly earlier to get some breakthroughs and and other things. I can I can understand that, but um, I thought Kotsia bowled really well today. I mean, as I thought he would in this IPL, so it's no big surprise there. Uh, let's just have a look at Gujarat's batting. My issue with Gujarat is that Shubman Gill might be turned into another KL Raul because it's just there's just not enough strength around him. Uh, but this was him in the power play in 2022. Last year, he scored a strike rate of 150 and he went at a strike rate of 143 today. So this allays my fears a little bit. Um, I thought he was a bit manic today, though. It's interesting for... You look at him... Um, I'm trying to think of some other batters, younger batters coming through. He just, you know, Jaiswal is the wrong one to compare him to because that's that's unfair. But you look at some of the other younger batting talent, traditionally, they feel like they're a little bit more in control when they have the level of talent that Shubin Gill does. Doesn't mean, uh, you know, and it could just be that he's just not a natural in T20 and so he's pushing it a little bit harder and so he is a little bit out of control. But... Interesting that uh, he's, he's kept a similar strike rate there. This is uh, Sai Sudarshan. I, in the IPL last year, he went at a strike rate of 148 against pace. Today, he went at a runner ball. You can see his spin numbers are exactly the same. Could this be the bowlers? Faced Jasper Boomerang. Um, he faced um, Gerald Kotsia. Uh, 
we can put that down to that. Could be situation of the game, uh, you know, all these sorts of things. It's something worth noting, though. My issue with him really isn't as much to do with this. It's the fact that I just think he gets stuck in somewhere between third and fourth gear sometimes. And I don't know if he has a great fifth gear um, anyway, and he doesn't seem to, to get to it as much as other players. But anyway... Uh, this is Sanchez Sampson. Oh, so that, that's the end of that first game. As I said, it's a stunning game. Absolutely, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. The, the two fantastic comebacks um, that we've seen have, have made these games a lot more exciting than they should be. Uh, this is Sanchez Sampson by phase. This is um, today versus batting. Uh, today versus batting first in the IPL. So you can see his first six overs were about the same as normal, but he did kick on. I thought this phase was. Exceptional. He was scoring at a strike rate of 160. And, and I thought, well, they're, they're going to score over 200 here. This is the period that I'm a little bit more interested in. I think the ball got soft, and I've talked about that already. But here, he was looking at sixes. I reckon he hit a six off a seam bowler and a six off a spinner, if I remember, in this period. I didn't really think he was looking to hit sixes in this period. The scoring rate's not terrible. I mean, it's gone down from 162 to 146. But even if he kept it up here, they were looking at a 200 run total. Now, is it possible that he's the captain of a team that has incredible bowling depth and he thought to himself, we're already above par here. Let's maintain above par. We don't need to do, you know, 200 or 205. Very possible. I just felt like he left a little bit in the tank. And he, he did start to hit better in those last four overs, which does disprove my, my ball uh, fiddling, uh, uh, phasing out a little bit. Although... Considering, um, considering how he had batted and the wicket and the bowlers he was up against, I still think that's probably a little bit soft. But either way, it's, it's something worth uh, looking at um, going ahead. Uh, and this is Rian Parag's strike rate by position bowler. So is this Rian Parag that we've all been waiting for? That's, that's my biggest question, right? Is this the player that now can whack fours and sixes, justifies the arrogance that he has, He's always seen the ball really well. His technique's always been a little... It's always been secondary to his confidence in his eye. If he can match that, I thought it was quite interesting today. It, we've seen in the smack that he's been attacking spin a lot more, but you can see here that he, he, with Krunal Pandya, he didn't have any options. He came in the power play and basically blocked out the, the power play um, there at the end. Naveen al um, uh, uh he went absolutely ballistic for... Then again with the spinner, Ravi Bishnoi. I thought he played Ravi Bishnoi better. I think he hit Bishnoi for a six, if I remember correctly. But you, you can see he went for Yashtakur. If he's going to bat at three or four, his numbers are going to have to come up against the spin. I'm going to have to see more of this and less of this. But that's, that's tomorrow's problem. Today's reality is that he did very, very well and he helped set up that total and... I think I said in the opening, more than doubled his highest score um, so far in, uh, from last year in the IPL. So lots of good signs um, from that point of view. Uh, and this was the uh, Lucknow Super Giants economy rates by bowling type today. So you could see here uh, their pace bowlers went at 11.72 and uh, their spin uh, went at what, sevens? Yeah, exactly sevens. So Krunal Pandya played a big part in that. Obviously, Rev Bishnoi. It'd be interesting, we're not looking at the, have I got all the bowlers? No, I don't have all the bowlers. I don't have them all individually. I looked at this bowling attack today and I thought there's some defensive options and there's some solid options. So I think Krunal at his best is a, a defensive bowler. And I think Ravi Bishnoi at his best is maybe an A um, strike bowler. How many other bowlers in this lineup would be anywhere near those marks. That's that's how I felt watching it today. And you know, sometimes you can get a little bit too excited with that, the pace versus spin. All that, it just there's options, but I'm not sure how many of them I trust. Uh, this is the um, uh, this was a ridiculous over. Uh, so I think last tournament in the IPL, Trent Bolt took nine wickets in the first over, and he got another one here. But it is worth saying that this was a full toss outside leg stump. I've said before that a full toss outside leg stump is the worst ball in cricket. And the reason is, is that generally it's impossible to get dismissed off a full, full toss down the leg side. In test cricket, it's not even a, 
uh, it's not anything. And in one day cricket, once it's once it's sprayed down the leg side or t T20 cricket, you can barely catch up to it. So imagine my surprise when Quentin de Kock managed to find um, the fielder at fine leg. It's an un an unfortunate way to go, but it was a much better ball um, to get rid of it through Devdat Padikal. Occasionally, the seam is on this wicket. I oh, know, I'm thinking of the wrong game. Yeah, but the Trent Bolt one, I think what happened here is Padikal was hit on the helmet the ball before, and I do think he was shook up a little bit. And the next ball, I think his feet were a little bit in the toilet, um, as, as they might say. He just didn't, didn't move them at all. Um, and it looks like it kept a little bit low. You can see it says that on the Crick Info co commentary here. But I actually think probably what happened was he probably just played it to the wrong length. And if you go back, I don't know if it moved all that much, but it was more that it went through him uh, because he wasn't ready. Oh, this was this is fun. So we've already shown one mad um, the win probability. So Luck now needed forty nine from twenty four balls. And at that stage, Rajasthan were a 60% chance. And six balls later, uh, they are an 84% chance because they now need 42 from 18. Um, and uh, they, would, uh, they would go on. So just look at that. That's sort of a wild swing of luck now getting themselves in front. And then losing it. And the interesting thing is they got themselves in front with that partnership. But it really was... Um, is it this over? It really... Is it the 17th? I'm just trying to have a look at that here. Yeah. It really was this over from Sandeep um, Sharma. So they didn't use Sandeep early on. What a fascinating cricketer he has been. Because... At one stage, he was like the Boovy Kumar type bowler, you know, really good, you know, sort of top and tail, just not quite as good as Boovy, but obviously played alongside him. Then he becomes more of a power play specialist. What, the last year and a half, he's starting to look like a death specialist. And, and he came on, um, he got rid of uh, um, KL Rahul um, and then bowled a really, really fantastic over and, and, whoop, and swung things around uh, there. So, yeah. Uh, and you could see... That just to go back on this, so this is the bit that is fascinating because up here, Rajasthan were a ninety-nine, a ninety-three percent chance. This is on Crick Info's win, win predictor, um, but I saw another one where they were eighty-seven. So it was pretty standard that most teams and most win predictors said they had no chance. They ended up as a favourite, slight favourite anyway, and then it all fell apart at the end. Just have a look at KRL. He's you know, what time is it? Is it? Is the IPL on? Are we talking about KRO or batting too slow? <laughs> um, maybe I, I, this almost makes me want to pass out um, having to think about doing this uh, again. But let's have a look. So this is um, a strike rate at the other end. So you can see that in the first six overs, um, his strike rate was 100. And the guys at the other end, including extras, was 151. Uh, uh, Cheyenne, if you're listening, we probably don't need extras on that. In, in future because we can just compare the two batters but remember that the other guys didn't make any runs at all but KL then does really really good in over 7 to 11 took down Ashwin I think at least in one over uh, the Spencer oh, no, I'm on the wrong game there who was the bowler he took down it's a seam bowler that he took down <sighs> he scored off someone else that I thought was really good I think there was a seam bowler in there anyway and you could see that at the other end, there was a, a slowdown. A lot of this is Nicholas Puran, who was new to the crease and they'd already lost a bunch of wickets. But he took it up. But then, from overs 12 to 16, he just got stuck. He looked tired. He lost his shape and he started slogging. Weirdly enough, he'll be, he'll be attacked because of intent. But he was trying to hit the balls, but he wasn't trying to hit them correctly. Um, he really, really did fall apart. And you can see here that, you know, the strike rate at the other end got to 212. You shouldn't lose this game with Nicholas Buran not out. Now, part of that has to go back to Nicholas Buran because he faced enough balls to, to put damage on. And while KRL will get more of uh, the stick and Nicholas, because he went out and because he had a solo strike rate, Nicholas Buran played a part in it. But realistically, they did get themselves back in front of this game and having Buran there at the end was not particularly uh, um, ideal. But here's the Buran bit. So this is his rolling five ball strike rate. So you could see that between, you know, 16 to 20, he's scoring 
boundaries everywhere. He then has another period where he scores some boundaries. And the rest of the game, he just couldn't get the ball away. You know, that's two, your two set batters. How much of this is, you know, um, going back and having a look at what I said before. I mean, how far back do I need to go here? All the way back, right? Sanju Sampson had a very similar one as well. Some of this is pitch, right? I just, KRL was probably too slow for the majority of his innings and Nicholas Perrin could, uh, you know, just couldn't kick on as well. That's ultimately what lost them the game, but those are also ultimately the guys that got them back in the game, right? So <laughs> it's, it's, it's not easy, I suppose, is the best way. Uh, I've got some super chats there as well. Um, uh, so we'll get to the super chats uh, in a moment. We'll take a quick break. If you've got any super chats that you want to ask, uh, please do. But I'm Jared Kimber, and this is the scoreboard, and we'll be back in a moment uh, with the super chats, and we'll have a look if there's anything else in the room we're talking about. Remember that cricket is a funny game. A hundred years before we protected our heads, players looked after their groin. So don't be as stupid as old cricketers. Protect your computer. NordVPN is the protection I use when facing cyber shortfalls or when the rights issue tried to dismiss me. NordVPN will help you get through the straight bat of any GEO blocks so you can watch all the cricket you want. If you need your pitch changed, well, NordVPN can doctor any surface to a new location so your IP address is set up for you to win. Want to buy an associate cricket shirt from a place that won't ship to your country? Select NordVPN. Want to watch a game on a free stream in another hemisphere? Give NordVPN the ball. Or if you just want to watch a clip on social media that the cricket board won't allow, promote NordVPN to pinch it. So if you need a VPN, go Nord. Use nordvpn.com forward slash Kimba to get a huge discount off your Nord VPN plan plus four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. Protect your computer like a cricketer protects their nether region with Nord VPN today. Okay, welcome back uh, to the scoreboard. I'm Jared Kimber. Please like, subscribe, comment. Super chat's the best way to go. Uh, after I've been now been broadcasting for about eight hours straight. If you haven't come across to cricket8.com, check out my Twitter. We usually tweet about it, but you can get, just go to Cricket8. There's lots of stuff that myself and CS and Estelle and Sorab and, and um, Cheyenne are all doing over there. But also we have the live watch-alongs. Really fascinating uh, today. You know, you've got analysis from me you've got an expert opinion from someone like michelle st patrick hewitt and then you've got rob Barron, who understands the market so there's there's geek talk there's you know a mood talk there's vi there's a lot of vibes talk today it really if, if you enjoy these videos you will like you will really enjoy the watch alongs as well just have it on as your second screen uh, especially if you don't like the commentary it's just an, another way it, the sort of stuff that you guys might enjoy listening to bluey says is class and better than sky I mean, right now he's better than Sky. I think Clarkson's the best T20 batter in the world right at the moment, but you know, Sky's pretty good as well. Um, oh my God, there's so many questions. Uh, should CSK play domestic spinner and Pathrana over Deshpande and Tikshana? Uh, it, a lot of this depends on how good you think the spinner is going to be because it's a big, discount from um tikshana and then also uh, tikshana has a particular role in that he can bowl all phases all the way through the game he gives you a lot of variability and just pande is probably even though he's not as good a bowler as patarana is probably can bowl in the power play and at the death as well so i uh, i don't know if that's a, a that's a great move but i don't know who the domestic spinner is you would have to tell me that there's a do domestic spinner worth looking at i w certainly wouldn't change your, every, their entire plan based on one game Ditya says, really enjoyed the streams and podcasts. Thank you very much. Any chance you can include some numbers on Samson comparing his scores in the first four matches versus the rest of the games in each hype year? I'll have a look. If Cheyenne's listening, I'm sure that might be one uh, for the future to see. If he starts really well and then, and then tails off. I, was it last year or the year before? I've got a feeling that happened. Uh, I have to go. It, it's been a very long day, but I've got memories um, that seem to suggest that. Path says, KKR and LSG did extremely well despite losing three early wickets. So do early wickets matter way less um, in this everybody go and smash era? I think teams have understood what I've been saying for a long time is if you lose three wickets and then you slow down, you kind of double down on the damage. 
Now, if you lose three wickets and you go hard, you might also lose the game. But you might also get a total that you, you could score. And I think a lot of teams were scoring under par because of the three wickets. But also I think the impacts up in this particular competition is huge, right? If, if everything goes your way, you can lose three wickets. Look, look at Kotsia batting at eight with Milani at nine for Mumbai. Uh, Teak Shana at, what, 10 for Chennai. You know, just off the top of my head, some of these batting orders look a lot longer because of that. Um, so I don't think losing the three wickets is the same as that has been in, in the history of cricket. And also, I mean, history of T20, it also allows you, if you know that, even if you're batting first and you lose three wickets, you'd be like, yeah, let's keep going. And then if we, we can bring the super sub in later. Sumik says... I thought Hardy captaincy was horrible. I thought he pretty much wasted Luke Wood. As I said before, I think he got the order wrong and then he got, kind of got a bit lost with Luke Wood. Um, if you're going to play Luke Wood, and it seemed like an odd decision for me. It, it seemed like Hardy didn't particularly think he should be in the team. Um, but if you're going to play Luke Wood, it kind of has to bowl that first over, first and third over, I would have thought. Um, that would That would, for me, would make a lot more sense. Also, you know, you're maximizing your chances of, of making an impact with a new player. So yeah, I think there's a uh, that that was the main problem I had I had an issue with. Overall, um, you know, I'm not I, I didn't I didn't see anything in the captaincy where I thought it was crazy. But he he did make a lot of maverick decisions, like moving himself all the way down in the batting order would certainly be another one. Natesh says extremely disappointed with Kishan. His consistency has been an issue for half a decade now. Look, I think people know that I'm nowhere near as high on Shant as everyone else is. I think he's a very good player. I think he's a plus player. I don't think he's a superstar. I'm not saying he can't develop into one. And I, I know his best innings look like that until he shows me that he has any kind of consistency. But if you're talking about this particular innings, Omazai was zipping the ball around quite a bit. Um, and if you want to know the truth, he just Ishan looked just half a yard behind, right? It, it, it looked sleepy, <laughs> you know. And that's generally when you go out early on is when you you know you're not you're not quite in the zone, you're not quite clicked on. You can have a go at him for that, but a lot of batters when they go out early uh, are going to be in a similar position. Reg says basis of what we observe from the outside. Uh, what do you think the mood is in the Mumbai Indians camp? I think they should be annoyed that. They kept Gujarat to a under par total and were massively in front for a huge percentage of that game and lost it. I think they'd be happy that Derwood Brevis faced as many balls as he did. I think they will be talking about the thing we just talked about with the Hardik used the bowlers absolutely perfectly. Or that was an issue in the game, but that's a good good conversation to have. Quite a few of their batters got got in and got set and faced a few balls. I'm, I'm trying to think of outside of Isha, didn't everyone face 10 or 15 balls? Is that, that sound right? I think that's right. Let's have a look. Uh, Ishan faced four balls, so that doesn't count. Um, Rohit got 29, so they'll be happy with that. That's always handy. Namin Dia did his job and faced 10 balls. He'll feel a little bit more comfortable. Dewar Brevis getting 38 balls out of him. You kind of would have preferred to get 38 balls out of him in a win. Uh, Tilak Varma faced 19 balls and Tim David faced 10. So outside of Hardik Bandia, kind of everyone got in. And as far as the bowling goes, uh, even if they if they use their bowling badly, they still did very well. Their biggest issue is probably a combination of their spinners aren't particularly up to it and are they going to use Luke Wood in a different way going forward. Uh, but there was a lot to like about what they did with their bowling um, overall. Um, but yes, uh, uh, I think... I, I think uh, there was, um, I think they'd be frustrated. It's just one game though. I mean, I would never, in a season as long as the IPL, which is longer than most T20 tournaments, I'd be like, these things happen. Um, let's go back next time. Uh, Keshav says, love the Cricket 8 watch along today, especially the back end of the Mumbai chase. I wish there was a replay option to watch it again later. Yeah, I mean, eventually, obviously, these things on Cricket 8 will be on YouTube, but it's only on the Cricket 8 website at the moment. Don't even know if it's on the Facebook page, but if you if you don't know, follow Cricket Eight on Facebook. There's plenty of content over there as well. Um, as I said, we're making videos, podcasts, writing. A lot of the stuff I'm doing during this tournament is over there. Uh, we love doing the the. Uh, I'm in their studios at the moment. Uh, uh, yeah, I uh, love to be able to do this. It's a really exciting company to be a part of at the moment. Um, but just 
the, you know, I, I obviously love commentating and this is, I reckon this is my first actual watch alongs. I might've done occasional watch alongs before. This is my first real proper watch alongs. And for T20 specifically, I don't know how it would go for test cricket, but for T20 specifically, it actually allows you to ignore the stuff you don't need to talk about, you know, each individual ball and focus on, well, uh, Rohit Sharma, you know, uh, is, is scoring at this rate. Uh, is, who's he facing next? What's going to happen here? Um, uh, you know, Kunal Pandya, uh, you know, uh, is not going to take a lot of wickets, so you could take him out of, uh, out of your mind. And, uh, you know, all these, I'm trying to think of all the different things that we did today. Uh, at one stage, there was an over where, um, where uh, you know, Rob found two different bookies with completely different um, odds where if you backed it on both bookies, you would make money. Um, and there was a sweet middle where you could make double, and that's actually where the run line ended up. Um, you know, uh, looking at, uh, talking about how the markets work and how they change, how little things spook the market. I talked about it before on the show about Mohit Sh um, Sharma getting dropped, uh, sorry, dropping the catch and injuring his finger and going off. And instantly the, the match figure is changing and, and the market, you know, taking that as something. And uh, all these little things of, you know, you, you always have a live vote on the markets, on the Betfair markets and all the skins markets that do a similar thing, the trading markets, literally tell you how, how they feel about DRS decisions. So you have like a live vote going on. It's fascinating, all that sort of stuff. And, you know, the ability to talk about, you know, matchups and, and everything else. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed uh, working on Cricket 8 so far. Um, uh, we'll be back in a couple uh, in a couple of weeks. I don't think we've got any games next week, but we've got two games the week after, and obviously just waiting for the rest of the dates to come up. But there'll be plenty more watch-alongs all the way through the tournament. We'll be doing the scoreboard on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then on Wednesdays we'll have a midweek one. We'll have the power list on Mondays. Uh, we probably won't have a power list this week just because uh, of, of uh, only having uh, one game for each team. Although it'd be quite dramatic ups and downs so far. Uh, but please uh, continue uh, to follow here and go over and support Cricket 8 as well. Um, but we will be back very, very soon for more analysis, for more chat, for more of my hair, all these different things. I'm Jared Kimber. This is The Scoreboard. Please support us, support our sponsors, support everyone, support your mother. Thanks to the kind folks at FlexiSpot for looking after my office and my butt by sending me their E7 Pro desk that save your favorite desk heights at a touch of a button. You don't have to crank anything. This thing just finds the height that you like and you can work. And their BS12 Pro Chair that supports my posterior while I'm recording, well, this ad and all my shows. If you need great desks, especially ones that change heights or the best quality chairs, head on over to FlexiSpot today.